Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-03. This story picks up shortly after the party has returned to Saydown Inn and Grish returned to the palace. As the cleric stood on the polished floor of the Denali throne room, he awaited his king's arrival. Guards surrounded the huge man as he paced until his majesty entered the chamber. All present immediately took a knee in reverence, but were briskly told to rise and leave. The guards bowed deeply and left the pair inside the throne room. The king walked over to a small table and poured a purple fluid from a crystal decanter into two silver chalices. Giving one to Gresh, the monarch plopped into the upholstered chair that is decorated in jewels. What news do you have, my loyal captain? asked the king. Grish clipped his heels together and began to give his report. Your Majesty, I have kept a close watch on the foreigners and do not believe that they are from my homeland. They appear to be soldiers of fortune, nothing more, nothing less. For the most part, they seem to be looking for something to do. The king slurped from his gilded cup and inquired if any of them would be considered problems. Grish thought for a moment and then pointed out that while each appears to be able to handle themselves, None of them would pose much of a threat to the guards. He hesitated in continuing and then stopped. Yes, the king asked. The enormous man pointed out that the smallest member of the group, Phidias, the gnomish rogue, was a thief by trade. The captain of the guards continued and pointed out that his size made him rather unnoticeable by most of the people and he had already pocketed several items. The king rolled his eyes and put his cup down. Lord Grish, I do not care about some minor thief. My concern is whether or not these individuals are Zenobian spies or Rodo militants. Grish bowed deeply and asked for forgiveness from his liege. No, my lord, they do not appear to be either of those things. Simple adventurers looking for trouble. The king nodded and dismissed the captain, who stopped as he turned away. My lord, there is one other thing. While wandering the city, the group have met Yolanda. They have formed a friendship of sorts. The king rose angrily, demanding to know why that problem had not been addressed. After a profanity-filled rant, the guard captain intervened and began to explain the issues with killing the fighter in the open. The king cut him short, but then a smile crossed the leader's face and told the cleric that he had an idea. I have recently received a report of a dragon extorting money from our western holdings. I was about to send out the military, but I think maybe our adventurers and our dear friend Yolanda could deal with this situation better. If they resolve the problem, so be it. If not, a few of our issues have been dealt with. Grish asked if he should accompany them, and the monarch thought for a few moments. Yes, my loyal guardian, but have them make the decisions and take the risk. You may act in a supporting role, but I do not want you harmed. It would not suit me. Grish bowed again and told the king it would be done. The next morning, the sun beat down on the cobblestone pathways and the blue dome buildings in Saydown, but a breeze off the harbor kept the temperature cool. Grish approached the inn and a pair of guards snapped to attention. The cleric paused at the door as one of the guards reported that the group was awake and eating breakfast. Any issues? Grish asked. The other guard reported that the little person has several pieces of flatware in his possession and has begun smoking a putrid tobacco. Ah, that would be the no. What of the girl, he said. Still present, sir. They have been swapping stories and been getting along very well. The captain rolled his eyes and exhaled deeply and entered the common room, where a grayish smoke filled the room with an acrid odor. 
the PCs had a large pile of dirty dishes in the center of the table, with the innkeeper looking on in disgust. Upon entering, the merchant motioned to the group with a pleading look in his eyes for the captain and the guards to resolve the issue. Grish again took a deep breath and then put on his best smile. Good news, my new friends, as they turned to greet him. I have found a little adventure for you if you are interested. The collective group looked at him intently as hideous blew a smoke circle of eight at the guard who waved the stinky cloud away. Is it dangerous? asked the gnome. Not as dangerous as blowing that smelly weed in my face. Do it again and I will implant your pipe in your ass until it knocks out your teeth. The angry tone was more than enough for the tiny rogue to realize that he had stepped over a line. He muted the flame and tucked away the ivory pipe in his breast pocket. Sir Omel, the knight, asked if the job was dangerous, while Harris, the mage, inquired about the wealth involved. The others began to pepper Grish with questions and raised his hands to silence them all. We have plenty of time to discuss the job, my friends, during the sea voyage. Sea voyage, queried Yolanda. Grish politely nodded and pointed out that there was a problem on the west coast at Red Bluffs. Brother Stance, the monk, raised his hand, provoking a nod from the large cleric. Grish, what if we don't want to handle the issue? Are we able to decline? The captain of the guard nodded and pointed out that the party was under no obligation to go on the mission, but the opportunity directly comes from the palace. The king is interested to see if he can handle tougher issues without him having to call in the military. Yolanda piped up questioning why the military would be called in for a problem. Grish smiled and pointed out that the issue was with a young dragon. That's not going to be a problem for a group of heroes such as yourself, is it? He inquired. The group looked at each other and shrugged their shoulders. Harris stood up and stated that, as the spokesman, the party would be happy to go and evaluate the situation and may or may not be able to resolve it. Phidias asked Grish if he was going and the captain nodded to the affirmative. The gnome smiled broadly and then pointed out that Yolanda should come too. I don't want Grish to be lonely, said the small rogue. The group roared with laughter, including the female fighter. If you guys don't mind, I'd be happy to help out. Besides, if we are victorious, I would be entertaining to see Grish owe me one. Besides, the captain of the guard advised that he would have their belongings taken to the ship and their debts settled with the innkeeper. A wave of his hand and a quartet of guards entered to escort the group to the docks. A short walk later, and yet another pouch of coins gained by the rogue found the group at the dock looking at a ship called the Flying Porpoise. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, Thanks for listening.